Well, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to another Thursday Bible study from Resurrected Hope Ministries. I'm so glad that you have tuned in. I'm always excited about Bible study because it's a time for us to uh, kind of walk through the word. Sometimes in a preach sermon, you're not able to kind of stop and really dissect the scriptures. So Bible study is always exciting for me. I hope that you are staying safe out there. I hope that you are practicing social distancing. I know that these are hard times, but there is always a reason why God takes us through certain things. And if we learn that lesson, I'm telling you, we will come out as pure gold. This is Lady Maria Perry, and I'm coming to you once again in our Thursday night Bible study. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, we're going to go ahead and start with prayer, and then we're going to get right into the word of God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just acknowledge you, we praise you, we glorify you because Jesus, you are Lord. You're the mighty God. Hallelujah. You are the king of glory. Hallelujah. You are the great I am. And we just give you glory this evening. We thank you, Father, for another opportunity to open your word and teach the people. We invite and invoke your presence, your anointing. And we ask, oh God, that you will touch the hearts and the minds and the spirit of the viewers. Lord God, let this Bible story, Lord God, come upon somebody's computer screen, somebody's desk, oh God, that needs to hear a word from the Lord. God, use me as your mouthpiece to speak what thus saith the Lord. We claim it is done in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to get right into God's word this evening. And we're going to come from the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, the book of Matthew. That is the first book in the New Testament. Come on, crack those Bibles open. Crack those Bibles open. We're going to come right into the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, you know, we are living in a day and age that we have so much access to information. We get information coming in from us from all sides, not just from the internet as far as websites and things of that nature, but we find that information is coming to us from social media, from television, from radio, and just because of the fact that we now can connect with people all over the world. There were times when information was extremely limited because it took an extreme effort to get information. I know, you know, I grew up where you really, the only way you can get additional information was to go to a physical library. Then you had to know the library system. <laughs> I don't know if I can remember the Dewey, was it Dewey Decimal System? I think that's what they call it. Uh, just to find what you're looking for. And then in some neighborhoods, the books or the information that was there is there is outdated. So information was very, very limited back in the day. So again, your view of the world or your view of opinions was very, very uh, narrow and controlled. Well, now we even have little two-year-olds. I look at my granddaughter and how she can actually recognize what to do with a cell phone and she's not even two years old yet. And so you've got young kids that are now able to swipe <laughs> and find exactly what they need on YouTube, even if it is Elmo and Big Bird. <laughs> um, so with that, it sometimes is very challenging to divide or to um, choose what is real and what isn't real. Sometimes there are things out there that are so believable <laughs> because of the way it's packaged, because of the way that um, the person speaks with such confidence or maybe because it just happens to be an article that is online. I once heard somebody say, if it's online, it's got to be truth. Well, not necessarily. And even in the church world, 
we have now access to preachers from all over the world. There was a time when your own pastor was the only word that you heard, was the only voice that you heard, because unless there was a council or a convention, <laughs> that's really where you fellowshiped is your home church. Now you can click on the Internet and hear preachers all over the world from continent to all of the United States. And so now it is getting difficult to disseminate what is truth and what isn't. So we're going to come from the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, and talk about some things. And I want to talk from kind of a topic or our theme tonight is going to be, be careful what you believe. Be careful, be very careful what you believe especially now in the news when it comes when it relates to the coronavirus i mean we've got stories left and right from people that are dubbed experts we hear one news story on one channel we hear statistics on another and it's getting even more difficult to really know what to believe one minute we're in a pandemic and then we're pulling our hair and we're nervous and, you know, everybody is afraid to even breathe the air. <laughs> and then in the next minute you hear conflicting stories and you go, wait a minute, am I doing all of this for nothing? Are the statistics really real? Are the numbers really real? I mean, I want you to think about this. The only reports that we're hearing is people who um, have the coronavirus, or we hear numbers about how many deaths, but how come nobody is reporting who has the coronavirus walked away and is living just fine? <laughs> like, it doesn't it make you wonder why don't they report that? I guarantee you there are more people surviving the coronavirus than there are that th than the people that are dying. But why do we report the gloom and the doom? Why is the only thing that the news is reporting is how many people are dying? Why not talk about who's living and who has gone through it? Just like the flu. There are many people that die, but most of us will get the flu, get through it. Those two excruciating weeks of having the flu and we're, we're fine. Um, so again, I'm just throwing that out there as food for thought, because again, you have to be careful what you believe, be careful what you believe. I think we as human beings rely way too much on what we hear without fact checking, without going and researching ourselves. We depend so much on somebody doing it for us that even in the church world, we have gotten very lazy. I mean, <laughs> who brings a physical Bible now to church? Look at this. I mean, this is almost ancient <laughs> because now unless someone puts it on the screen for you, you don't even take time to see if what the preacher is saying is accurate. Even in our Bible studies with Resurrected Hope Ministries, I'm always encouraging you, whatever we teach and whatever we talk about, I am encouraging you to go back and finish the chapter. Go back and read it for yourself. Go back and fact check. I, I tell people all the time, you know, don't just listen and then say that was a great word, pastor. I want you to, you know, and rah, rah and whatever else you want to do. No, it's time for you now to let that word get in your spirit, go into prayer about what you hear. I, I, I'm not afraid because I know that everything that we teach and preach, hallelujah, is from the word of God, and it is because we sought God in prayer. So again, be careful what you believe. And we're going to see what the scriptures have to say about a few things. So I'm again going to be reading from the New King James Version. 
All right. And I'm going to be reading starting at verse 13, starting at verse 13. And the word of God reads, enter by the narrow gate. King James says straight gate, but that's what it means. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. Did you hear what that says? I want you to get it in your spirit. And there are many who go by it. Let me say that again. Enter by the narrow gate. Go through the narrow. Okay. For wide is the way. Or is the gate. And broad is the way that leads to what? Destruction. Hmm. And there are many who go in by it verse 14 because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life narrow is the gate and difficult <laughs> is it that leads to life and there are few who find it that's the word of God this is Jesus himself Speaking these words, because anytime you see in the word of God, anything in red, this is Jesus speaking and warning people even back there. Don't follow the big wide way. Don't follow where all the crowd is going, because that's usually the way that is leading to destruction. But narrow is the way. And sometimes it is the more, more difficult way that leads actually to life. See, when you see in society that everybody is doing it, when you see everybody going for the latest and greatest thing, you better watch Watch out. Watch out when everybody is doing it, when everything is being accepted, because usually in the end, that is the way that leads to destruction. It seems like the great and wonderful thing in the beginning because it's easy. <laughs> it's the thing that's easy. It's the thing that gives you the most pleasure. And usually that is the trick of the enemy. Jesus himself says it in the word. Be careful. Be careful following the most popular thing. Be careful following the big crowds and the mega things because sometimes that's not where you're going to get your deliverance. Be careful following the uh, videos on YouTube that get the most likes. Uh-oh. Be careful following the thing that is most popular because it could be the very thing that will lead you to destruction. Don't shun the very people that you think are a nobody and just a startup and just a little small thing, because they could be the very one that can give you what you need. But because they aren't in big lights and their name isn't big and they don't have the latest technology and their videos aren't the latest, you shun them because you think, oh, they don't have it. Be careful, be careful, because Jesus himself says, okay, because usually it is the narrow way that will give you life. The Bible also says in verse 15, again, Matthew, the seventh chapter, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep, sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Oh, we talk about this all the time. We talk about how, you know, there are plenty of false prophets in the land. And I believe this is why God shut the whole thing down and made us very limited, even in our services, because the reality of the situations, there were false prophets everywhere. There are people popping up, taking on the title prophet more than, you know, <laughs> getting married, <laughs> You know, it's like, what qualifies a person to be a prophet, a prophetess? What qualifies people now? You know, because somebody said something that just happened to be true. They want to put a prophet behind the name. You got to be careful. You got to be careful about what and who you believe. 
because we're living in the last days, people of God. We're living in the last days where the enemy is turning up his manipulation. The enemy is turning up his deception. He's doing exactly what he did in the Garden of Eden. And that is begin to question you about what you believe. God gave Adam the commandment and he was to share it with Eve, which he did. But then the serpent slithered his way in and caused Eve to question what she knew. Mm hmm. And that's the same trick that the enemy is going to slither in in these last days because you know the truth. Oh, you know, it's in your spirit. God has put that thing in you. Some of you almost from a child, you know what the truth is. But because now we have access to all of this social media and all of the great this and the great that, you're starting to question some of the key things that God has taught you. Be careful because Jesus himself said, beware of false prophets. Be careful what you believe. Because it says, you know, outwardly they look like sheep, but inwardly they're ravenous wolves that are ready to devour the very life that is in you. Amen. It says, now, how do you recognize when this is a false prophet? How do you recognize the false? <laughs> well, Jesus tells you right in his word. That's why I say, if you go to the word, it won't steer you wrong. The Bible says, verse 16, you will know them by their fruits. Uh huh. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So what we mean is if someone is a prophet, their fruit ought to show that. If you call something an apple tree, there ought to be some apples on that tree. You shouldn't look at an apple tree and it's producing grapes. <laughs> so it's the same way. If you are whatever it is you call yourself or whatever you claim that God has called you to be, there ought to be fruit, no fruit. Don't know if that's truly your calling. If you are an evangelist, you ought to be evangelizing and affecting places everywhere you go. We are not here trying to discount or discredit the call. We're just saying that if you are called to a certain thing, there ought to be some fruit. That's why I say, be careful, be careful what you believe. Ask questions, look for the signs because otherwise you can find yourself being deceived and manipulated. And that's what we don't want. It says, you will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or fig thistles from thistles? Verse 17, even so, every good tree bears good fruit. Do we hear that? Every good tree bears good fruit. And, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Verse 18, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. This is so, so important. I was once told, how do you identify a counterfeit, I don't know, hundred dollar bill? How do you identify it? It's not that you have to study what's wrong. You shouldn't study the counterfeit and try to memorize the counterfeit in order to recognize it in the monks in the midst of counterfeit and real hundred dollars. That's not how you identify a counterfeit. See, most people would have made that mistake. They would say, well, in order for me to identify the counterfeit, I just got to memorize all the mistakes that are that are there and I'll know it next time. Wrong. 
the best way to identify a counterfeit bill is to study the real one so much so that you'll recognize the fake instantly, instantly, because you already know you've already got it in your entire spirit. You've got it. What real looks like. So the immediate, as soon as the fake shows up, <laughs> you don't have to know every dot and tittle, every jot and tittle about the counterfeit because you know the real so well. Well, so it is in um, spiritual things. When you know that you know that you know, you've read this word, you know in your spirit what is real. Honey, your spirit will be grieved when you when you see a, a counterfeit. You don't have to know all 10 points of what a, a, a false prophet is. It will it will immediately come to your attention. And that's why it is so important that you study truth until you know it like the back of your hand. Because if you don't study truth, then someone can get over on you so quickly. I know personally for me, immediately, almost immediately, I can, I can pick out a false prophet and I don't have to know a whole lot about that person. <laughs> I don't, they don't have to do a whole lot. It instantly, I can tell, I can see, I know when something is not quite right. Why? Because I've spent time with truth. I spent time in the spirit. So what do you do? What do you do with all the time that you have on your hands? The reality is it's time to get to know truth. It is time to get into the word of God for yourself. So that when someone preaches to you on a Sunday morning, just an abbreviated version of the word, you can pick up on what's truth and what isn't. Be careful. That's my topic. Be careful what you believe. All right, let's continue. So here again is where Jesus, he was just teaching. He was teaching. These are the things that he was talking about in the book of Matthew when he began his ministry. He just started talking about all of these things and he was warning people because why? Even back in the day when Jesus was walking the earth, there were false prophets. They're just like today, you know, everybody wants to, to create some new doctrine and God said, no. Mm -mm. I already came and gave the word and it's settled. It's done. There's no new doctrine out here. We just have to follow the word of God. So verse 21, he then takes a little shift and he says, you know, see the first part, he was just talking in general. He was talking about, be careful. There's false prophets out here. Be careful because what's popular is not always what's life. It can lead you to distract, uh, to destruction. And then Jesus does something very powerful where he brings it into himself. And he says in verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father in heaven. Oh, that's so powerful. Cause let me tell you something. Everybody that's crying that they are a Christian and they know Jesus and they saved anyhow is not in relationship with God. Jesus says it himself. He says in verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? What does that sound like? That sounds like this day and age where we've got everybody crying out. Jesus is Lord. We cry. We have everybody doing everything in the name of Jesus Christ. So much so that it is discouraging people from wanting to become a Christian because everybody and anything is putting Christian as a sticker on their chest, but aren't living the life. And that's nothing but a trick from the enemy. I'm not surprised because that's what the enemy wants. And unfortunately, there are people that will look at somebody's raggedy life 
<laughs> who's crying, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, and isn't making any effort to live right and giving up. You've got people out here who are starting churches for not for, for the wrong reason and leading people astray and taking advantage of people in the name of Christ. And when they are, when the cover is pulled off, people are left hurt and broken and upset because people have handled the name of Christ in a very irresponsible way. Oh, and don't think these people are going to get away. Don't think that you, when you lead people into a lie that you're going to get away because the blood of those souls are going to be on your hands. But if you've ever experienced or been under someone who didn't do you right in the name of Jesus, don't give up on God. Don't give up on Christ. It's not God's fault. God will take care of that person. But don't you still have a soul, hallelujah, that has to be saved. And God still loves you, hallelujah. So don't give up on him. So that's what verse 22 says. You know, everybody's doing everything in the name of Christ. Then there are people who are doing so much in the name of Christ, but they're not connecting with God in a relationship. That's what, what God means in his word, what Jesus means when he says, I never knew you. In other words, you never took time to get to know me, to be in a tight, close knit relationship. See, it's more than getting behind a pulpit, putting your face on a flyer, coming up with some some cliche that makes people go, "Ooh!" <laughs> it's more than that. And I think that's why God said, pump the brakes. There were more conferences and fancy flyers going around than than I could even count. I was like, my goodness, how many conferences are we going to have? And even some of the big name church conventions. It, you know, conventions should be about masses of people coming into a city with truth and affecting souls. But even these conventions were about just us getting together and what do you have on and who's the big name preacher and posturing in the pulpit and who's the next bishop and what's the big name. We got more caught up in all of that. What outfit are you going to wear? Who's going to hook up with who? Come on, let's just be real. But whenever a convention of thousands of true believers hit a city, it ought to be life changing. There ought to be souls getting saved. The gospel, hallelujah, Jesus, I feel it in my spirit. The gospel ought to be preached in the streets, left and right. Whatever hotel that convention and council is being held in, the, 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 the housekeepers ought to be getting saved. But we lost it. We lost it. Where, where, what, 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 what did we do besides gather together with each other? What did we do in these conventions besides gather together? How many souls were baptized in Jesus name? How many were filled with the Holy Ghost? How many people were introduced to Christ as a result of hundreds of people coming into a city? And so Jesus is saying, yeah, you say, Lord, Lord, but I don't know you. Mm. Verse 23. And Jesus said, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Or in the King James, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. See, we have to be careful, people of God. We have to be so careful what we really are buying into and what we believe because the reality of the situation is there's a lot of noise out there. There's so much noise. You got to be careful because again, there's a lot of noise going on. And if you don't take a minute to pause and first of all, fact check yourself. Also think about where the source comes from, you know, with the internet, we got to be careful because with the internet, there are articles written in Google, LinkedIn. I mean, all kinds of websites where some person wrote the article. And a lot of times it's their opinion of a certain thing. 
And we take it as gospel. We take just because there's an article on Google, just because you Googled something, don't you know that there are human beings that are populating this stuff? There are human beings that are writing these articles. Do you ever take time to look at the fine print? <laughs> even when it comes to different things that you are participating in, even when it comes to different things, different business opportunities or whatever it might be, you see an article and all of a sudden you're ready to quit because somebody said, oh, this is a scam or this is this. Is it? Who is the source? Who's the person behind it? And so that's what I say when it comes to your soul, just because somebody has a big name, just because somebody speaks with a lot of charisma and a lot of fancy words and speaks with such confidence, it's not always true. So I want to encourage you to take time to really evaluate what you are taking into your spirit. This is the last day. These are last days. I know we've been saying this for decades and decades, but with every century that comes around more and more, we're lining up with what God is saying. Look out for these signs in the last days. Now, even more. I mean, it's kind of scary when you think about it. When I think about how some of the things in the word of God are, are, folding they're, they're unfolding right now before us and at a rapid rate and now is the time to get serious about your soul now is the time to get into this word and like I said you don't have to take it on in one bit chunk <laughs> you know I, I did a bible study go back on our youtube page about how to study your bible with more uh, to be more effective at something of that nature and I gave you tools on how to read the word of God. This is not ancient word. God's word is living. And everything that you see in God's word, you can relate to today. It's, it's happening. And so I'm just here, just a short Bible study to help you to question, what am I really believing? Am I get, are you getting caught up in too much noise? Sometimes, you know, they have an old adage that says, uh, there are too many cooks in the kitchen because if you have too many cooks in the kitchen, you know, one cook wants to throw this into the pot. The other wants to throw this and it ends up being a hot mess. You don't know what the meal is going to be. <laughs> well, it's so, so it is with what you allow in your ear gates. Don't allow so much in that it's going to cause you so much confusion. Sometimes it is better that you and God sit down with his word and allow him to illuminate your understanding. Allow him to open your eyes unto the scriptures. I believe it was Luke or Mark where he talked about in the 44th chapter where he talks about he had to open the understanding of the, the, the disciples, his apostles. Now, here are followers who were with Jesus in person watching the signs, the miracles, the wonders. They were there and it still took Jesus to open their understanding. So it is on today. It's going to require God to open your understanding. But he told you to seek him. If you seek him, he'll fi you'll find him. You'll find the answers that you need in the word of God. I dare you to do it. If you just go into prayer just before you open the word of God and you ask the Holy Spirit, guide me, show me what I need to know. I guarantee you. When you seek God like that and you begin to read, all of a sudden, your understanding will start to be opened. If there's something that you are seeking from God, I am here to tell you that God is faithful. He is faithful and just. He is the type of God that says, I want you to have a relationship. Just don't believe all the garbage that's out there because there's a lot going on especially now with all of the virtual services and the virtual things that are going on, you can get a hold of anything, but you don't want to get a hold of something that will cause you to go astray or that will cause you to go into error. 
if whatever somebody is teaching you cannot be found in the word of God with examples. That's what I tell folks. I'm like, if somebody's telling you that salvation is this way and you don't see one person in the Bible that it was done that way, then I would question it. Okay. You've got to be able to use the word of God as your guide. Amen. Well, I hope that what we said today will cause you to really think and to gird up the loins of your mind. Because again, what the Bible said about wide is the way it leads to destruction, but sometimes it is the tough way and the narrow way that's going to give you life. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe this was somebody's word. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I want to encourage you. I also want to encourage you that this September 13th, 2020, we are going to begin a powerful series called God Fix My Life. And it's going to be on Zoom. So I want you to make sure that you go to our website at www. R E S dash hope <laughs> dot com. So you can get the zoom details and it's a six part series that we're going to be doing one series per month. And it's going to be practical tools and also spiritual principles that will help you to allow God to fix your life. Hallelujah. So join us in the name of Jesus. Also, if you feel led to make a donation to our ministry, please visit our online giving page. Hallelujah. Where we can be able to receive your offerings. We are a new ministry that is on the launch pad, building momentum. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we need your support. If you want to be a part of our launch team, we still have openings. You have a gift, a talent, an anointing and an ability to launch a, a ministry. We need you. Even in these times of social distancing, we still need you. So again, contact us. We are readily available. We need you. Yes, we need you. We have a love for people, a love for ministry, and we cannot wait. Hallelujah, Jesus, to see what God has for Resurrected Hope Ministry. And we want you to come along with us. Hallelujah. So that's it. I love you so much. We we just, we pray for people that we don't even know. We just go in and we want to be able to pray for you. So if there's anything that our ministry can do for you, please reach out to us because we again, want to be there for you. Well, be safe. Okay. And again, crack open that Bible, dust it off. Come on. You can do it. <laughs> dust it off and see what God is going to do for you. Again, be careful. Be very careful what you believe. Amen. Amen. God bless you in Jesus name.